Homes on wheels range from camping in your car to multi-million dollar motorhomes. But the current trend is to go smaller. On this episode, we're going to show you how one couple lives exclusively with everything they own in their 19-foot camper van. And it's awesome. I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. Meet Carl and Patty. They're living the van life after retiring early, selling it all, and I mean all, and hitting the road to explore America in a 1995 Horizon 190 camper van. We invited them to sit down and share how they decided to do this, what the lifestyle's like, including their struggles, and all about the van. So whose idea was it to do this minimalistic road life? Actually, it was both of our ideas. We started watching Bob Wells' videos, Living Simply. We knew we wanted to retire and retire early, and this was just such a great option for us. Once we got the idea in our head that this was a possibility, right. we'd go to work, we'd come home, we turn on YouTube, and we watch videos. And then we right. got, and we started looking at different types of rigs we could have. We looked at, you know, we're looking at all the different options, and there's like mm -hmm. overwhelm with all the things that could be possible. And we looked at mm -hmm. a lot of different things before we ran into this van, and it was perfect. This was great for us, or this style is good for us because we don't want to pull something. And this, uh, the size gives us more access to different areas, parking spaces, Definitely. national forests, and parks that we can get into a lot easier. I know yeah. from watching you guys' YouTube channel, um, We've seen places that you've gone to, especially like national park sp yeah. spots, but places where you've been able to camp for free, there's no way yeah, Rosie could get in there at all. And mm. it's been really like, oh man, yeah. <laughs> you know, should we stay this big? Because you guys have gone to some really cool places that only something this size could get into. Right. So you guys do have a YouTube channel, like mm -hmm. I mentioned, Our View of America. So you guys do it more about being able to share your travels and your adventures with friends and family and... Yeah, I think that's why the name is so great, because we just wanted to show our view. I, I know I've enjoyed it. So now you guys um, are full-time in the van. Mm -hmm. You sold everything. Right. Yeah. Do you have storage still back at home? Yep. Nothing. This Nothing. is it. This is it. Wow. Okay, so Carl, why don't you tell us about your van? It's a 1995 Horizon 190. Uh, it's built on a Ford D250 chassis. Intervec is the company. They built Horizons and Falcons, I think the mid to late 90s. D250 extended length. It's a 19-foot rig, high top. Now, what, what Intervec does is they buy the vans from Ford, and they customize them to make it a Class B. So they've added the water heater, the fridge, there's an Onan generator, um, and it's got water tanks and propane tanks underneath. So it's got everything that a, that a big RV has, just a little bit smaller. The awning came with it. Okay. Um, it's an old awning, and so we put these, um, it, it stays locked when you close it up, but I just put those zip ties on there just for peace of mind. The tent will get wrapped up. It, it comes in a bag, but then we also put a, a tarp around it, and then we strap it to the roof when we're on the road. Water input. Um, if we're a city water connection, uh, we have a suitcase solar panel, so we use that to access the panel or when we're going to be plugged in. Smooth. You'll see Velcro around the whole perimeter of this store. There's actually a screen that came with this that goes all the way around and we can just unzip it. So if we're in an area where there's a lot of bugs or mosquitoes we can put that up and still have fresh air coming. We've added this table because we need a little bit of extra counter space. Oh that's what just for our hot water. Oh okay. A hot water tank. Oh. So, so when we take a shower we can okay. pop that guy on. Wait 15 and we got some hot water. Our passenger seat swivels which makes it nice. It gives us some extra living space. And then I see you have a solar charger over here. Yes, I've got a couple panels. That charger is for the solar panel that's on the roof. We have a 100-watt flexible panel on the roof. 
and we also have a suitcase 100 watt panel that has its own charge controller built into it. So both of those charge, both of those uh, 200 watts go into our house battery, which is underneath the bed. Okay. And how many amp hours do you have in, in battery uh, storage? A 105 amp hour AGM battery. Oh, okay. Uh, we bought it new three years ago when we first started, and it's still holding up well. Sweet. How long will that keep you going with everything you get going in the RV? Um, it'll it'll be a sunset. We're always at 100%. Um, morning, we're usually at 65%. Oh, so you, Never, hardly, you hardly use any. Hardly use any. And, I mean, the, the things that we have, we have a 12-volt fridge, which is low power. Uh, the TV uses very little power but we can watch tv till midnight and and still be in good shape so the fridge tv there's a fan on the uh, composting toilet that run all the time and other than that it's led lights yeah when we first got the van it had the incandescent bulbs inside there um so i got online i found out what size base it was and you could order the leds that fit in that same socket so okay so we ordered a bunch of those i replaced all the bulbs three years ago and I got some extras just in case I needed to replace down the road, and I've never had to replace a single bulb. This is a bed area up here, isn't it? Correct. When, when, the way it was built, there was a bed that slid out. There's some rails along the side, and so the bed would slide out to about to the end of that rail, and you could sleep up there. The, the mattress that came with it was about two inches thick, and even with a mattress that thin, which was terribly uncomfortable, you had about this much space between your face and the ceiling. In the ceiling. Right. So we ripped that out, made it a storage area. Okay. Picked up a cargo net on Amazon that fit perfectly. For and us. I see where you got your storage, like on the shelves over there. And yeah, we picked up those shelves. We picked up at IKEA. Uh, they were like five bucks a piece. So we got four of those, two on each side. Is that wallpaper that looks like? Yeah, it's it's Amazon again to okay. the rescue. <laughs> we got we picked up contact paper. It's really easy to work with. You could. You could apply it and pull it up if you were a little bit off and reapply it. Oh, and okay. We've had it on for a little over a year, I think, and it's held up pretty well. Um, the original bed that came with it was the foam was was stapled to the boards. Um, it's a jackknife bed, but it was uncomfortable. So we, we ordered a 7-inch memory foam mattress, uh, watched a couple videos on how to, how to take those, how to cut those. So we got one of those electric turkey carving knives. And we, I measured it and we, we sliced it up and have a much more comfortable bed now. Originally, there was a microwave oven here. We got rid of it. We threw the microwave out. We built a bookshelf. And that worked for a couple things. We have our, our Blue Eddy battery back there, which has a, a, our 600-watt inverter in it. We'll use that to run the TV. And then that'll charge off of the house battery when it's not charging off of solar. We've added the Berkey um, water filter gave us a lot of storage space for pots and pans behind there and gave a great place. And this, this was more for me than Patty to have a TV. I mean, the original setup, and most RVs are this way, is they'll have this little guy here, which will light up and tell you what percentages you're at. They'll give you one, two, or three, three or four dots. This is a lot more accurate. This will tell me exactly how many amp hours I got left. Right now I'm at a full charge or I can tell the percentage where I could tell how much is coming in or going out at any particular time from all the power sources that we use in the in. So only thing we don't like about this, I didn't realize at nighttime, this throws out a lot of light. So what Patty's come up with. Oh, so that stays lit the whole that time. That stays lit the whole time, yeah. Right. Um, Patty's a good artist, and that works perfect at nighttime oh, to hide yeah. the light. You'll see a lot of art throughout our van, but Patty's great at painting. Underneath this bed is our water tank. The water fills on the outside there. But there's a, I think it's 30 or 35 gallon fresh water tank. And then we've got our house battery, 105 amp hour house battery. And then a lot of miscellaneous storage underneath the bed. And the 35 gallons of fresh water, typically how long does that guy, does that last? You? Depends what mode we're in. We're right now, because we're at a place where we can get water whenever we want, That'll last us probably a week to ten days. It depends. What and then you uh, have you do have some safety things in here. Yes, we have um, smoke alarm and a carbon monoxide detector, and it also detects if you're cooking without moving it. Because if we cook, because it's such a small space, just from regular cooking, we'll set that off. So that's very sensitive, which is good. But we'll take it down when we're cooking. We'll put it back up when we're done, just to be. We do have a, the original furnace. Um, this is the thermostat. So this guy runs on propane. Uh, the furnace, the hot water heater, 
and the fridge and the stove can run on propane. We don't use the fridge when we're boondocking, we'll just use the smaller 12 volt fridge in the back. So we got a new fantastic fan last summer and that was my project, one of my projects last summer. This space was our original shower area. Um, this bar up here, we would hang the shower curtain on and the tub is right here below this shelf is a small tub as you can sit in. Um, and because the way the vans are built and they're curved up on the sides, so when you'd stand in that space, for me it would be like sort of like it was a pain. But we'd have to pull this shelf out. This shelf was added for additional storage. We'd have to pull this shelf out. We'd have to pull the fridge out, get all that stuff outside or in the, on the couch, and then we could set up and do the shower. Uh, so this year we picked up this guy on Amazon. There's our shower. We use it inside our tent. And that way we can also have a comfortable chair. We have a heater in here. So when we come out to start our shower, we'll turn the heat on before we jump in the shower. And we also pick up this guy on Amazon. It's rechargeable. And this little motor here is the pump. And, you're gonna, and it gives you really good water, good flow. So we'll push the button, get wet, turn it off get lathered up and then come back and rinse off. Now, one problem we had that we solved was where's all that water go? Everything has to have multiple uses. The water bucket we use to shower with is our trash can when it's not shower day. And when it's shower day, it's, it's our water supply. This bucket here, when we're traveling, it stores some things. When we're parked, it stores some other things for our, our outdoor kitchen. And so we'll take all the things out of this tub, put that tub inside there, and we'll stand inside this bucket. We can stand up all the way and it's more comfortable. We have a water heater in our van, so we just went ahead and, and turned that on, propane water heater. Um, once the water got hot, we fill the bucket up and turn the water heater off and carry the bucket out here. So we've added a 12-volt refrigerator to 53-quart fridge that we picked up off Amazon. Uh, very high efficiency. I know when I run that guy on my house battery, it uses about, I think, 20% of the power that the built-in fridge would take. The composting toilet, we picked that up off of Amazon, a Sunmar brand. It has a built-in fan, low voltage, um, and that runs 24-7 also. So you spend um, part of the year work camping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. We're camp house in Ohio, a place called Alum Creek State Park. Um, it's a six month mm -hmm. job for us. So we, you know, we work daily, 20 hours a week, yeah. basically just cleaning the, the uh, camp spots out after people leave. We just have, so. we have like 25 campsites that we're responsible for. Mm -hmm. So, and check outs at one, check ins at three. So between one and three, we're hopping, making sure that people, and most campers are pretty good, but there are some that are a little messier than others. We don't it's have to okay. do restrooms or anything else. We just do those campsites to make oh, sure okay, they're ready yeah. for the next uh, camper. Yeah. Is that near where you have family? It's close to it, about so, 30 miles. Yeah. So do they come to visit you yeah. there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They come there and camp. Our daughter has a van. It's funny because when we decided we were going to go on the road a couple years ahead before we did it. So the Christmas before we left, mm -hmm. she bought us the Bob Wells book. Mm -hmm. Okay. How to live in your car van, RV. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up meeting Bob that first year. He signed the book. Okay. Right. And then she bought a van, so I gave her the book back. Oh, <laughs> no, no, but did. this season yeah. here in Quartzsite, right, yeah. Bob Wells came to you. This That's season, right. actually, yeah, we have Bob came out and, and toured our van and, and uh -huh. interviewed us um, a few weeks ago. So that was kind of nice to meet Bob. Again. Down yeah. in here, both sides, this is Carl's side for clothes, and this is my side for clothes, our mirror. This is where we keep all of our food. And then in here, we'll have our dishes and silverware, and then your Plasticware. All right, so obviously being in a small confined space like this, cooking and cleaning can be somewhat of a challenge. So what we've done is we have added a table to give us a little bit more space. And when we cook, we'll just take everything off. I have some trays that I'll set here and I can put food or dishes here. And then this is our two burner gas stove. 
I do use vinegar and water to help wa rinse off the dishes, especially if you use soap on there, you want to get all that off and minimal water. So that's what we use to clean that off and rinse. We we'll use a lot of paper towels. Say, what is your least favorite thing about traveling small? When it's time to get up and go to bed, because because our bed is not a separate room, uh -huh. so when, we, when it's time to go to bed, we have to open the bed, get all the blankets yeah. down, get all the pillows down, get right. all the... So it's in the beginning, her exact words were, what else we got to do? We're tired. Yeah. But after a while, it's like, oh, uh, I got to <laughs> get this bed down. It only takes five minutes, ten right. minutes at the top right. to get it ready. And the, and the difference in you know, schedules. Like he, he says he wakes up at six, but sometimes like today it was five. About 30. Okay. So, early. you know, and I, and I don't wake up that early. So that's a little hard when you live in a small space. Mm -hmm. When we, were, we didn't have the tent and I woke up at five thirty-six, it was miserable. And when we're traveling, <laughs> yeah, we have to stay inside. Yeah. We can find. Mm -hmm. What's the most difficult thing on your relationship traveling small? That. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have any space, I mean, mm -hmm. so it's so it's nice. Again, the tent saves the day. So if we want right. if we want our own space, you can come out here and paint, or I can right. do whatever. We got some space if we can't go mm -hmm. outside because of, of weather conditions or something. Mm -hmm. We've got separate spaces that we right. can go to. So you figured out solutions to some yeah. of the problems. Right. Yeah. These guys will give us. You can see out, but you can't see in as well with the with the netting. But also, you can roll the windows down, and you can get airflow inside the vehicle. Um, and then if you want a little more privacy, then these guys just go up the... Did these come with it or did you yeah. buy that? We bought that. Is that another Amazon purchase? Another or? Amazon purchase. Okay. Because the front one comes down also. So it's nice if you want to get some light in. What are your future travel plans? Our goal mm -hmm. is to get a piece of land somewhere. We're not sure where. Mm -hmm. um, in the perfect world, we would have maybe five acres, maybe mm -hmm. a stream running through it. <laughs> but and a tiny have, house maybe. a tiny house you know yeah. buying i mean literally buying a shed and converting it would be right. i would, I would love to fun. do that and convert that into a living space do some gardening maybe mm -hmm. have some chickens and, and i think we still want to travel as long as yeah. we can what have you enjoyed most about spending the winter in quartzite Not this is our third year doing this i think the the best part about quartzite is just meeting new friends mm -hmm. And honestly, we stay in touch. Like, I know we've stayed in touch yes. throughout the year. Um, it's just meeting new people, being able to hang out, um, walk. You know, we do a lot of hiking together, so. Hey, you guys, we're gonna miss you. Aww. Jamie and I are leaving tomorrow. And I really wanted to thank you for letting us see your homes and telling us all about them. It was really nice and it was fun. I just like, I feel like I'm proud of you guys for the way that you live. I don't know that I could do it. And you're all like the least stressed people that we know. Yeah. Aww, right? That is so sweet. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, thank stories. you. We You've appreciate been the it. greatest. Thank you, Carl and Patty, for sharing your lifestyle with us. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are interested in what it's like to live and travel the van life. To see some of the cool places they've traveled to, check out their YouTube channel, Our View of America. And we can't wait to see you guys down the road. And thank you for watching this episode of Roaming with Rosie. And if you think that this information will benefit someone that you know, we'd appreciate you sharing it with them. In the description, you'll also find links, some offering discounts and coupons to products and services we use and recommend. We may receive a small commission when you use those links, but it helps us to offset the cost of producing these videos. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. And do ring that bell because that's the best way that you'll be notified each time we upload a video. And make sure to leave a comment. That way you could be part of the conversation. Until next time. We'll, we'll see, see ya. ya.